too. How was yesterday? That looked like it was a bunch of fun for all the guys going off the diving board and such. Yeah, I think um, just in general, like, you've had four straight days of practice. So, uh, you know, awesome for our guys just to be able to get to relax and, and then get away from us, you know, the pool and then just, you know, go, you know, take care of their bodies and, and get to bed early and some of those things because you get stuck, you know, you practice 13, 14 at camp and, and it's a grind for everybody. So I think those physical as well as mental breaks are, are huge for them. Were you happy with the response today after the off day and, and hot, the cooler weather and all those things? Yeah, I, I thought we, uh, you know, we didn't let, uh, you know, I thought we kind of all came out here a little sluggish today. And then I thought our guys really, you know, energy-wise worked hard to pick it up. Um, yeah, I think we had some momentum plays early, guys made some plays, and then all of a sudden it was, you know, they could feel the energy and, you know, the guys feed off each other. So. Uh, start to finish, a lot of good stuff we did today. And, you know, like always, stuff we got to get corrected at this point and, and, and keep working towards that, that end goal, which is you know, making sure we're, we're prepared and ready for week one. How did you feel this week went overall? It's that second week of camp, game day still far away, but the kind of newness of being back out here isn't. Well, we got we got a long way to go, and we told the guys that, and I'm not saying that. I mean, we've got a lot of new guys. we got some new guys that missed practice last week, so you're trying to develop them and get them um, – you know, really see what they can do, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, getting Isaiah back or new guys like J.D. Miller Jones, some of these young linebackers. So we've got, you know, uh, we've got a, a, a lot as far as trying to decide, you know, depth and who, who are we going to be able to count, count on week one. So I think the urgency from our coaching staff and, and these guys to, you know, get it right and understand that these practices is, is really important. And we talked about it, you know, I mean, even going into next week, I mean, the, the good on good piece that we get two weeks out from the game is more important than anything to us as a staff just to keep developing us and where we're at as a defense. How, how have you all been experimenting with the in-helmet communication on the defensive side, and what have you kind of learned so far? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's great against tempo because you can talk to the guy and tell him what the call is, so that, that definitely helps. So we, we use it then because I think it's really realistic then. Um, you know, just the ability to not have to signal all the time. And, uh, you know, obviously they did it for signal stealing from that. So the ability to, you know, go off headset. To, uh, so I think there's a lot of a lot of good with it. I mean, I, we have a walk and talkie and we talk to them. You know, parts of practice we do, parts we don't. You know, you don't want it to be a crutch all the time. Uh, you want them to be able to go play. I don't know how we'll do it on game day. Either myself or Coach Crum will have it uh, on our box. I, I hadn't decided to you know, talk to the talk to the linebackers through it, uh, but uh, but no, it's a it's, it's definitely a nice addition, I think. Do you think it'll be a linebacker who's kind of controlling that and passing on that communication? We've, we've, we've toyed with the safeties and the linebackers, I mean, I think, you know, you looked at the, the league that does it, nobody puts it on the DBs, so, you know, I think following, <coughs> excuse me, following, you know, kind of how the NFL does it makes the most sense as far as tying everybody together, but we've done it both ways, so. Um, you know, everybody wants it in their heads. Everybody, everybody wants it. I'm like, do you really want a coach talking to you and right before the play, though? As a player, I think I would hate that. But they all they, they all want it. So, How's your uh, safety group looking? You mentioned getting Isaiah back. you got yeah. Jaden Miller Jones now back. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you got four guys that have played a lot of reps that, that I think are honestly, you know, we got four starters for three spots. And, you know, that, that you feel good about getting out here and, and being ready to play week one. Obviously, Isaiah needs to get out. And, like you said, get back in the swing of things. This was uh, this was a good day to kind of be able to watch the film and assess where he's at. But then you're trying to bring those other guys on, and just like a linebacker, you know, we kind of have three guys for two spots that have a lot of experience now. So you're trying to bring those, you know, who are the next couple guys in that rotation? I think a lot of that will be decided on Saturday. You know, um, you know, once once we get through Saturday, you kind of got to be ready to set. Hey, what's our two deep at least look like going into the season? So I think those are probably the two biggest positions as far as um, just trying to create that depth and get those guys ready. Speaking of those linebackers, what have you seen from Kill Wars? He's kind of trying to take that next step after you know what he was able to do for you guys last year. Well, I mean, he's really confident. He's really his his approach. Uh, you know, is, is so serious and mature. Like I said last year, for a guy at his age, so I think he just continues to get more and more comfortable. Now Coach is playing him at, at Will Linebacker too, as well as some mics, and now you know, you're talking about learning both sides of it, which I think long term is going to make him a better player, because anytime you have position flexibility, I think you go through some of the uh, you know, the learning curve, but then once it does start to slow down and settle down, you have a better understanding of where everybody else is. And so 
uh, even like that in the spring, you know, we did that with Brandon Crossley, and he was playing some free safety in this, and now he's playing corner. But I think his understanding of the defense should be really high because, you know, it helps you learn and understand where everybody is. So uh, I think that alone uh, in his approach is going to continue to, uh, you know, help him elevate his game you know, to a really high level. And you see some, kind of some of the same things that we saw with uh, with Alex and Brandon uh, Booker, you know, as a freshman coming in, uh, in his approach and his maturity. You know, I think that's the thing for, you know, linebackers and safeties are such mental positions. Um, you have to have uh, a certain level of maturity and approach to be successful early. If you don't, uh, it's going to move too fast for you. And so I think, uh, you know, he's another guy that I see a lot of Kilgore in Brandon, his approach right now, that, that, that has us pretty excited. Uh, to see where he ends up at the end of the year. What are those kinds of things that you look for that show the maturity uh, for linebacker like Brandon? Well, I, I think it's just you have to have a um, seriousness and approach, a detail in learning, uh, you know, a natural uh, leadership and presence. You know, Kilgore's probably not as vocal uh, when he was a freshman, but just his presence of how he was going to approach every single day. There was just a business-like, workman-like attitude because he understood how fine those details were and how important it was to get it right. And so you see a lot of the same things. I think Book's probably maybe a little more vocal than Kilgore was as a freshman, but the same type of presence they both have. Um, that's just, you know, a, a level of maturity. I don't really know how else to say it. Just, you know, there's a, not this doesn't say you can't joke around, but just their approach is so serious and um, their process is so organized that you know that they're not going to make the same mistake twice because they're going to be really detailed. What position group do you feel that you're the deepest at? Probably D line. Yeah, I think D line. I think corner. Uh, you know, I, I'm really pleased with where we're at. You know, at corner right now too. I think we've got you know five to six corners that can all play in games. I think Nettles continues to develop as a freshman that, that can be in the rotation potentially down the road. And then you got Crossley, AJ Davis, Smoke, uh, Jahari, Deuce. So you're looking at five to six guys there. You know, so I think D line is right. But with the D-line, we, we, last time we talked to you, you weren't pads. What are your impressions of them now that you've seen them? Well, I, you know, I think um, what I've seen from Coach Tibbs and, um, and Coach Dunham, you know, in the time being here is a lot of the times the guys that transfer here are really talented, but maybe haven't, uh, sometimes have been well coached, but sometimes, you know, maybe haven't been coached in the fundamentals in the same way that we want to take it kind of from the ground up. And so, you know, early on, it's you don't want to make an assessment on where a guy is at his first playing blocks and stuff until you give those coaches time to really work it and drill it and get better. So I think what you're seeing now, you know, uh, it's good that Jafar has been able to come back and practice. Um, so we can start to see, you know, get an assessment because he was out for, you know, five, six practices there in a row. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, Jared, you know, gotten better every single day. Uh, really, you know, excited about him, I think. Uh, Jefferson has improved so much from his time here. And so I use him as an example, like Jonathan Jefferson, when he got here to where he's at now, is a completely different player. And so, you know, you don't want to assess those guys too early because you know if they're going to buy into the coach and take the coach, it's going to really help them raise their, their level. So I think there's just a lot of depth in that room and competition, you know, should, should, should bring the best out of all of them. Quite a few of your transfers are local guys kind of wanting to come back home. How much of an advantage is that to get you know some of the best from this area wanting to come back in Dallas and play for you all? Yeah, I think it was you know probably a, a bigger advantage when we were in the American. I think now at the level that we're at, like we're trying to recruit the best transfers period in the country, you know, um, and so understanding that our brand is is not what it was two years ago. Uh, I think we put this program on a, on a national stage again. That's a recognizable brand uh, from coast to coast and. Uh, from the success that we've had. So we want to recruit the best players. Obviously, it's a plus that there's a lot of good high school players from here. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of times you leave the state of Texas. Uh, I'm from here. Uh, and you go to places and you realize just there's nothing quite like home. And, um, you know, it, it, it is. When you grow up here, there's more state pride. My, it's funny, my wife and I talk because she's from, she's from uh, Illinois and our kids going through school and all the different – Texas songs they learn and everything else, but there's a lot of pride in this thing. There's a lot of history, and you know that's something that um, you know me being from here, you know, uh, is, is important to me. So, you know, I think you know when you have a program that's successful and you got an opportunity to come back home where family is, like you know, being from here is important. So.
did you catch any of Elijah Chapman's highlights from last night? I did. What's it like I did. I saw. I saw the sack. You know, which was which was awesome because he, he sacked him. He almost sacked him twice, right? So he missed him and got up and and, and got him down again. I saw that one last night and. Uh, just really happy for him because I know, you know, and we got a lot of guys, you know, we'll have some guys in this class that I think if they produce at the level that we hope this year can be, you know, can follow that same mold that maybe, you know, uh, NFL teams say, well, he might not be tall enough to draft this, that, and the rest, but, you, you know, it's hard to deny production and guys that are, you know, consistently produced at a high level like, you know, when they get an opportunity, you know, you should expect them to, if, if, if the situation's right, you know, and I think he got, he, he was able to go to a really good situation where they needed a dynamic three technique and, and he's fit that system. So, um, really excited for him and, I, and, and, you know, our hope would be that that would pave the door for, you know, everybody to notice other guys that we have. Maybe not the ones that everybody wants to talk about, but ones that are really good players, you know, that, well, they might be a 5'9", that's not the prototypical height for an NFL linebacker, but, you know, when Pace left Cincinnati, uh, you know, he was the best linebacker in the American Conference and nobody drafted him, and what did he do as a rookie? So, you know, I think there's something to be said about guys that are really productive at the glitch level. Have you started looking at Nevada and how, and, and when do you start getting into that with the guys, and then how do you approach it with the new coaching staff, too? Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start we'll start it next week some, but our focus next week or anything is going to be about us. And uh, obviously, you know, uh, I think I think Coach Cho has uh, a really has been a really successful head coach. Um, you know they're they're going to be a tough physical football team. Um, you know defensive minded head coach. You know we expect them to be you know committed to running the ball a bunch of different ways. I think that's why you look at the hire that he made coming from the Kansas offense. Um, you know where they're able to run the ball and be very multiple. So you know I think you know I've got a lot of respect for him. Um, you know the job that he did at Montana State back in the day before going to Texas and and uh, so you know it'll be it'll be a challenge you know for us for sure and, and one we, we definitely won't overlook but yeah there's a lot of unknowns you know you know they got new players they got new coaches so um, right now we're in the we're in the focus on us to make sure we're getting better over we need to get better at. How have you seen Coach Lashley develop in your time knowing him and what's it like to see him kind of get this opportunity to be on a national stage like this? Yeah, I, you know, I really don't think it'll change his approach in any way. I mean, I think, um, you know, the thing about about Coach that, that I've, you know, uh, probably respected more than anything is, is, is coming into it and, and trusting, trusting me. It was a process from year one to year two and having faith that our staff was going to get it where it needed to be. And so I think you uh, go through some of those things. But, you know, I, I love the fact that, you know, we have a great defensive staff and, you know, he'll provide input if I ask for it, but ultimately he's going to trust, you know, us to put our kids in the best situation possible. And, and um, you know, and I don't think that's an easy job, you know, but practices and, and stuff like that, I think for him, you know, I don't envy that situation that he's in because he calls the plays, but he wants to see us do well, but he wants to see them do well. And I don't think that's, that's a really, uh, you know, that's a, tough, that's a tough situation to be in to try to play Switzerland, uh, so to speak, you know, so, um, you know, I, I think uh, you know, our kids really enjoy playing for him. I think he's a player's coach. Uh, you know, he's he's not you know, a transactional guy. Like I mean, you can go in his office and talk to him whenever. And I think that's uh, really rare. Probably maybe a lot more rare than even kids realize. You know, in college football, because you know, I've worked for you know seven or eight head coaches, and he's probably the easiest one I've worked for as far as just to approach and have a conversation. How do you approach tackling kind of in the back end of camp? Of how many, how much do you want to go live? How much can drills work? And then how much does it kind of take a, a game day to, to finish the, the refining? Yeah, I mean, I think I think all the above, really. I mean, we got to do drills. We've got to tackle live, and it's going to take a game day. You know, um, yeah, I, I, I believe week ones, every every week one that, that I've coached in has come down to three things. You know, can you get lined up on defense? How well do you tackle and how hard do you play? And generally, if you do those three things, you know, you're going to give yourself a, a, a chance to have success in the first the first week of the season. So, um, no, we're drilling in a lot. Um, you know, we've probably had more opportunities to go live than last camp, which I've, I've appreciated. Uh, I think we'll continue to do some of those things. Um, you know, because we got to we got to put our guys in those situations uh, as much as possible to see it. Obviously, there's a balance of keeping everybody healthy, but, you know, football's a contact sport, and we got to make sure we're ready still week one. Uh, but, yeah, probably some of those things will, will come down to, hey, 
we're going to go out there in the game and see where we're at, you know. But uh, our last game last season, we did not tackle well. And so that's something that has uh, weighed heavy on us as a staff, um, you know, because I think we really did. And it was on me. I, I thought I want you want the bowl game practice prep to be fun, uh, but we probably I know we didn't have the same energy and focus on that. It was you know, a bowl game. It had been a long season, and it showed up. So we've tried to just get back to the details on that. And uh, yeah, but we're gonna need to need to have a good next two weeks for sure. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It was good. Uh, nice off day. Got to. Have a lot of meetings and go on the pool and just have some team bonding. Yeah. Who do you think had the best dive, in your opinion? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> it was all sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> People falling on their backs. No, nothing. Nothing was clean. But I. I can't say anything. Mine wasn't clean either. <laughs> so. <laughs> how's How's your second year going so far? Just in you know going through spring, summer, fall camp. What did you focus on overall? Everything. Um, taking taking a step by step, learning the defense better, like the back of my hand. And now I feel like I have a very good comprehensive um, thought on the defense, and I know it like the back of my hand. And just asking Crum, Coach Crum what I can do to improve my game and trying to get better at the stuff that he told me I need to get better on. Coach was talking to us a second ago about uh, Brandon Booker and about the maturity that he brings to practice already as a freshman. He said you were very similar last year. Can you kind of talk about how your approach to practice and what you've seen from him as well? He tries to, he tries to follow us, which as he should, because there, there's, there's, there's a president in the, in the room. And when you're a freshman, you look up to the, other, the older guys, of course. So we, Ahmad, Kobe, me, we all set that example. And everybody else should follow. And I think he does a tremendous job on excelling that and making plays on the field. How would you describe the example that you're setting? I say me, my Kobe, Brandon, and me as Anna, we're all setting very good examples like being early to the meetings, being early to the field, taking notes in the meetings, <laughs> just just the very small things that can create a big thing in the future. You did it all in high school uh, and then you come to SMU and you've got to you know, learn and, and reset and, and you know, sit behind a couple guys and play a little bit. but. You know, how much more confident are you now? And, and was last year kind of a motivating factor to you know, take a huge role this year? Absolutely. Every, everything is motivating. Just stepping on this field, being blessed to wake up every day is motivating. Just go with me every time of the day. But a lot more confident from the first year, as anybody should be, moving from your freshman year to your sophomore year. So a lot more confident and motivated as always. What's it like learning the other linebacker position a little bit? And like you said, does that just help understand the whole defense? Absolutely. When you learn to know both linebackers, you know where all the X's and O's are going for on a, on a certain play. So learning, knowing both of the linebacker positions, Mike and Will, you know, the, you know the defense. What, what's Brandon like? Uh, you know, he played quarterback in high school. He played uh, all over the place for Frisco. You know, kind of played a little bit late in last year. What have you seen from him, and you know, how close are you guys? He's an athlete. We were real close. We we actually went on to California together, so we're real close. That's my that's my dog, and he, he's an athlete. He, if you tell him what to do and how to do it, he's gonna go do it on the field and go make the play. Is, is, is he kind of have a screw loose out there? Is, is he one of those guys? I saw him in high school a couple of times. <laughs> we so. all have a screw loose in that room. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any uh, opportunities to use the uh, in-helmet communication during practices? Yes, sir. I've used What's it all fall camp. Um, it's nice. It's most definitely an adjustment trying you because you're looking onto the sideline for the signal, and then you're also trying to cover your ears of trying to hear the call. So it, it, there's there's problem, but it's a good problem, you know. And I think we've I think we jumped over that border and we're ready to go. What is it like playing behind this defensive line? Oh, it's amazing. They make my job and everybody's job in the linebacker room so much easier. They take up double teams, and it's it's amazing. All right. Thank you. Thank Thank you you so much, Alex. How's fall camp been going for you? It's been going good. It's been a, a little toll on my body, uh, you know, mentally, physically, but it's been going good. Can't complain. Coach Simon's been getting us ready. 
been a lot of competing on the offensive and defensive side, so can't wait for the season to start. Yeah, having, having so much of that safety group back, how, how much does that help you guys overall? It's, uh, it feels good. It's a lot of uh, it's a lot of chemistry because we all been here for two, three years, uh, going on two, three years. So uh, it's all it's a lot of competition. It's a lot of people getting each other better, and that's that's, that's what it's all about. So, how yeah, much do you does make, that help? Kind of build what you guys have done, build each other as players when there is that stability and you're able to, to grow from what you've done in the past. It builds us a lot because it's like when you see another uh, player in your position and make a play or just do something as simple as run into the ball every play, it just makes you want to get better and you're like, oh, let me be like that guy. So it's it's been helping all, all throughout fall camp. I love the group of that uh, surrounds me. I love it. What do personal goals look like for you this year, and what is, how has your work in the off season kind of built up to allow you to do that? Really, just want to get better every week. Uh, you know, just with the playbook, just think knowing the play before it starts. I really just want to be the best player I know I can be. That's, that's really all you can uh, all you can really ask for. That's when you play. How do you balance the desire to be the starter, the guy out there, but also knowing? this defense there's going to be rotations your time on the field is going to count it's kind of hard sometimes but at the end of the day you just whenever your, your numbers call you got to make the play just do what you uh because it's been times where i was thinking i was going to the game but i play a lot didn't play as much but you just gotta do what you can with the few plays that, you, that you're given that's all so. who's been surprising you on the defensive side of the ball abdul abdul muhammad he uh, registered last year you know it was a lot of uh, stuff being said about him, but he comes to he comes to uh, practice, comes to the meeting, asks questions, does what he have to do. He's always he made a nice play today. Uh, on the, uh, had a little pick at the post, so I'm really ready to see what he's gonna do this year. How would you describe yourself as a player? Someone who loves the game, someone who's always gonna do what he has to do. You know, me and my coach might butt heads sometimes, but at the end of the day, I know he wants the best for me, and I'm gonna always listen to him. What are some of the things you've been wanting to work on this fall camp specifically? My communicating, just uh, talking to the, uh, talking to not just my uh, safeties, but talking to the corners, talking to the uh, linebackers, talking to the D line, knowing, just trying to communicate the play before it starts. So communicating has been a, a vital aspect I've been trying to work on. Number change for you this year? Uh, yes, uh, I had uh, War three in high school. So 16, they just gave it to me when I got up here. But I was talking to coach. I was like, hey, whatever I got to do to get that number three, I, I really want to do it. So you know, it worked out for me. New, new year, new league, new number. How yes, much? Uh, how excited are you for the ACC? Man, I'm really, really excited because it's uh, – man, I'm just excited. It's a new, a new comp. It's, it's going to be a little harder, a little tougher, but I'm, I'm ready for it. It's just because SMU in, in Dallas, so it's really a big jump. But I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm ready for what this team is going to do this year. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. Good to see you, man.